right, let's just start with this. A lot of people are saying, that Josh McDaniels, that guy's a jerk. And that guy's never get another job. So let me just ask you, in the coaching fraternity, what Josh McDaniels did, does it hurt him? Well, it, it hurts him. It, and obviously there's guys that moved their families and took jobs there. Matt Eberflus, who's the defensive coordinator and, and was there, what, mid-January and had some opportunities in Dallas to move up. You know, those those things people understand. And there's other guys that, that thought they were coming in today and, and going to be part of that staff. And that doesn't work out. In terms of him not being able to get another job, though, I don't I don't see it that way. The the league has a way of forgiving. The league has a way of forgetting. Yes. And after a few look, when he finished up in Denver, everybody said he'll never get another job. Typically when any coach is fired, the odds are the narrative is so bad they'll never get another job. And look, you win some games, some time goes by, people have very short memories, and then you're hot again. Why do you think he spurned them? What is your belief that Kraft just – I don't think it's just money, Eric. He's got – I mean, is it just money? No, I, I, it's, not, it's not money, I think, at all. I think that first experience was uh, really difficult. And then he goes to St. Louis, and he has that experience. And then he goes back to, to New England, and it's a very comfortable place. It's a place that has taken a long time to be built and to operate that way. And if you're going to another organization and trying to – build that organization in the same fashion that New England was built, which to me is the exact right way to build it in and has shown over time how successful it can be, it's difficult. And you need to absolutely be on the same page with the GM. And I like Chris Ballard a lot, but they don't know each other. That working relationship, you're not sure. You're getting married without spending a lot of time That's right. with the person that you're getting married to. And by the way, their owner has a history of being in Indianapolis impulsive. Yeah, and, and you're, you're going to get situations like that around the league where, where owners are impulsive. But I'm sure Josh took a step back and looked at this again and, and said, this isn't the right fit. And maybe it was looking for a situation like, like you saw in San Francisco with, with Kyle Shanahan, where he got to go in. He got to pick his GM. There was he was part of that process. I'm sure based off of where his Josh's leverage was and how he was um, how he was viewed, he thought that that could have been more of the situation. Uh, when you look at um, most people went to my Twitter account last night. Colin Belichick is stepping down quickly. I don't know Belichick's relationship with Josh McDaniels. I don't see Bill necessarily as a mentor. He just wants you to do your job. But, I mean, does this signal to you that Bill is leaving sooner than later? No. What this signal to me is when I, when I saw this, it was, okay, New England won last year's offseason. They're winning this year's offseason. The, whatever the line in Vegas was for them to return to the Super Bowl just got a lot better because their ability to keep the biggest free agent – that they have in Josh McDaniels, to me, signals, okay, they're, they're doing it again. And all the talk about lacking unity, to me, this was a, a, a unifying event where Mr. Kraft, Bill, Tom, all put on the recruiting hat. Do you think they all did? Yes, yes, I'm, uh, yes, and, and got Josh to stay. And getting Josh to stay probably leads to Dante Scarnecchia staying on and Ivan Fear staying on. And Skip uh, and I disagree about the fact that when you lose two, two coordinators, it's a really difficult situation with, with him thinking that it's not as difficult in New England. But it is. It, By the it, way, last time he lost both coordinators, Charlie and Romeo, they went 10 and 6. Like, it is a thing. It, it, it is a thing. We saw it in Atlanta where they had to, had to go through this, the, the same process. Uh, the interesting thing is maybe Charlie Weiss would have shown back up in New England if Josh had left. You know, that, that you, to me is, is the attempt to try to bring So you think Brady, in. Kraft, and Belichick all went, sat down, little surprise cupcakes, said, come on, here's more money, here's more love, a little more mentorship, a little more responsibility. Because I said today's National Letter of Intent Day, they basically flipped McDaniels. This is what college football coaches do today. Basically, they went in, and, and my takeaway with Kraft said, listen, they have an owner that's impulsive, I'm not. And they have a quarterback with a bad shoulder, and we don't. And it was like a recruiting day. It was a tug of war. I sell my stability. I sell. I I promote their instability. They just flipped a coach instead of a defensive back from Texas. Yeah, and it happens with free agency all the time. Does you it? don't you don't want a free agent to leave your building 
and go to another organization. I've heard that. And you always want to, ideally, you're the last organization that that person visits. But if you get them in the building, you don't want them to leave without a contract because there's a good chance they could get flipped at the next spot. And, and, and this was recruiting. Yeah, and no, we and always... it, was, it was smart for them to do, and it helps them significantly moving forward. Crap, Belichick. What is that relationship? I mean, I can sit here and guess, and there's stories been reported that it's not always perfect, but they've been together 18 years. Marriages after 18 years have bad weekends. What do you think it is today? I, it's, a, it's a very effective relationship. It's a very productive, successful relationship. Does everybody see eye to eye with people that they work with? Does everybody see eye to eye with their bosses? No, but they've found common ground in, in an environment that has a lot of change, that has a lot of major decisions that have to be made. They found a way to work through that and be successful year in and year out. Is there going to be tension in any, in any situation? Yes. Who, who doesn't have that? So the idea of, of, of you know, it reaching a, such a dramatic impasse, I, I think that's overblown. Would you have, okay, let's say you were the offensive coordinator for New England and Indianapolis offered you the job. Would you have taken it knowing what you don't know about Andrew Luck's shoulder? Would you have taken it? Would well, you stay with Brady? And let's say, let's say Kraft came to you, Eric, and said, Eric, you make 1.2. You're making 3.6. I'm going to overpay you. And... Go ahead, go in your interview. But you know what you have here. You don't know what you get. Would you have taken it? What is more attractive as a coach? Well, first of all, Andrew Luck's shoulder hasn't changed in the last two weeks. Okay, the ownership hasn't changed in the last two weeks. And when Matt Eberflus went there and took that job, that to me was signing the contract. That's when the contract was signed. And, and it was pretty established that, that Josh was, was going to move on right. afterwards. Now, in terms of recruiting and saying – Hey, his shoulder isn't as good as it, as we expected. You believe he committed knowing that two weeks ago? Yes. Yeah. Because so when, do you once think you less start, of once you start bringing coaches in? Okay. That it's, do you it's think done. Le, do you think less of Josh today? I think that in the world of sports, people always uh, want to judge other people for doing what's in their best interest. But at the end of the day, people do what's in their best interest, what they feel is right for them. And it's not always fair to everybody else involved, but it's it's pretty consistent. And this it's a it's a cutthroat world. The NFL is is operates that way. Coaches get hired and get fired in one year. Coordinators get hired and get fired, you know, in three or four weeks. That that this is just the way it works. It works is. in college football that way, and it works in pro football that way. And everybody has their eyes wide open when they get involved. Yeah, Chris Bowder didn't seem overly happy. It, uh, look, I don't blame him. That's a, he's in a tough spot. Have you now. ever promised to go somewhere? You know, for here, I promised. Christy and I were telling this story. I know where I, I had lunch here, and I had lunch at a restaurant in Los Angeles, and I promised to the people, I'm not going to name their names at the company, I was coming here, but I still had a deal at the other place. And I had to go back to the other place, and they made me a pitch. And I remember just thinking some basic human decency. I'm like, I can't. I just can't lie to those people. I gave him my word. It doesn't matter what they are. And I remember going in for my last pitch at the other place, and I kind of made my mind up. I was like, out of respect for my boss, I'm like, okay, I'll sit down. But in the end, I couldn't have done what Josh did. And I'm not saying moralistically I'm, I'm superior. I'm saying I'm, I'm, I'm guilt-ridden with that kind of stuff. Like, once you're in, you're in. Like, I hear these guys that walk off the altar the day of the wedding, and I'm like, I'd just rather get married and divorced a year later. I can't do it. Could you do it? When, when I became the defensive coordinator in New England, I went and spoke to Nick Saban down in Miami. And I went and spoke to Romeo Cornell in Cleveland. And I thought I was going to leave. I was prepared to, to leave at that point. And then the recruiting pitch kicked in, and it was very compelling. And I knew what I had in New England. I knew what the system was. It was, it was comfortable. I understood that we were going to win on a consistent basis. And I made that decision to stay. Now, I hadn't committed to either one of the, the other clubs, but in my mind, I was moving on at that point. So I know that, that that recruiting pitch can be very, very compelling. Yeah. It, it, Mark Rick, the coach at Miami, used to be at Georgia, also, always told me, he goes, recruiting is just, I love you, and I want to show you I love you more than the other guy. you got to show people love. Adults, kids, you got to say, man, you mean a ton to me. 
you know, Rob, Robert Kraft put on the syrup. I love you. You're part of my family. We've been together. We've won together. This is us. That that stuff works with people. And I wonder what would have been different if they had won the Super Bowl. I wonder if that would have changed the, the dynamic. I think when you go through an event like that and, and it doesn't work out, you can get that much more introspective. And 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 the idea of, of the finality of, of leaving a place that's been so good to you and been so good to your family those are those are hard decisions. When I left to go to the Jets as the head coach, it was a really hard decision. There were a lot of people that you had shared experiences with, you you had great relationships with, and now you are moving on. And you know in the NFL when you move on, those relationships change and and it was tough. It was tough. And did you I cry pre- when you drove from Foxborough to New York, were you crying? The uh, whole way. No, I, I, I look. There's a great opportunity there. <laughs> there <laughs> They're paying you a lot of money. There, there, there is, there's a lot of upside to that decision too. <laughs> but I do get the emotional aspect. Yes. Uh, of it, and I think we've all gone through it in our lives when we transition somewhere. Eric Mangini, good stuff. Good seeing you, Coach. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd, or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.